We are joined now by Kevin Long, hitting coach for the Philadelphia Phillies. And Kevin, congratulations. Your fourth team in which you won a pennant with. How does this one relate? Well, they're all special, and, and I never take it for granted. It's, uh, it's exciting times. Um, I'm excited to see how this one turns out. I know our guys are ready to go. A uh, lot to digest, Kev. Let's start with something that happened in Game 5. Are you surprised that Melvin did not bring in Hayter to pitch to Harper in the bottom of the eighth inning? Well, I mean, he was out there, and we knew that there was a possibility he could come in if he brings him in. Uh, does that change what Harper does? I, I don't know. I mean, he's so locked in right now. Uh, and his at bats, it's just one after another, and he's hitting every pitch, and uh, he's been tremendous. So uh, they could have brought in Hader. They decided to stay with Suarez. I'm glad they did. Uh, the result uh, obviously favored us, uh, and Harper took care of it. And now it's all up to Justin Verlander, game one for the Houston Astros. And Kevin, you know better than anybody, you have a team up and down that lineup that hits the high fastball really, really well. Christian Javier. Justin Verlander, highest percentage in terms of fastball up in the zone. I'm sure you guys are prepared for it. How do you plan for that? And conversely, are you expecting more of the off-speed breaking ball stuff? Well, I mean, I think Justin throws a lot of off-speed pitches as well. I mean, he's got a really tight slider. Um, he uses it a lot. Um, he uses it a lot to righties and lefties. He's got the good curveball still. He's uh, hasn't thrown the change up as much as he has in the past. Uh, but the fastball, it plays, it rides, it stays at the top of the zone. We'll be ready for it. <laughs> and a little trouble early in these two starts to him, first couple yeah. of innings against Seattle and the Yankees. Mm -hmm. uh, Mojo, Kev, I mean, you got plenty of it. You've won game one of every series so far. I think it all began with that six run rally in the ninth inning in St. Louis. A lot of juice there. Haven't played in four days. On the road here in a game one. How important early at bats for the Phils tonight? Let me hear. They're all important. Um, we go into each series and we talk about how important every out is playing 27. Uh, we're going to continue to do that um, until they say the game's over. So we'll be ready to go from pitch one. Obviously those at bats are important but uh, the ones later on in the game are, are just as important as well. Earlier today Harrison Bader Yankee center fielder said that Bryce Harper's swing is scary. Why is it scary? It's just so compact and explosive and it's together uh, the decision making. Uh, there was a pitch against in the Suarez at bat. It was a changeup that he laid off, and I just said, "Wow, he saw that really, really well." Um, and that kind of led to me knowing he was going to get a fastball. I was hoping it was one he could handle. Uh, but you know, he's just pull side, opposite field, center field, splits, changeups, curveballs, sliders, fastballs. He's been able to hit them all. He's really fun to watch. Uh, this is a very good bullpen with no lefties in it. But a lot of those righties that do very well against left hand hitters and you got Schwerber and Harper. You figure the games are going to be close Kev that will be interesting late in the game with those two up and they have to use a righty against them. What's your take there. Yeah well they made a little change. Oh that's right they put Will they Smith. Put Will Smith that's in. Good point. So he is in their bullpen. They could make they could they, put him in there. They could do that but uh, at this point with those two righty lefty. Um, it doesn't matter. They're they're putting together good at bats against anybody they face, and I feel comfortable with uh, obviously Kyle and Harper against the righty or lefty right now. You figure that Kyle Tucker is going to get things going. Jose Altuve is going to get things going for the Astros. You guys are all going really well. At least you were at the end of the CS. Who's your X factor? Oh boy, I'm pretty good at this most of the time. But I mean, <laughs> he caught you. Look there's, at that. there's so many guys that. Are swinging. Let's go with JT Riamuto. Okay. Uh, that's the guy I'm, I'm going to put on the spot. I think he's going to have a big series. Interesting. All right, fair enough. How about this ballpark move close? How's it play? You played here late in the year. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's a fair ballpark. I like the ballpark. Um, I like it closed up. Um, it, obviously, the weather plays a factor in that, but. Um, you know, I think it's it, it's favorable for us. It's favorable for them. They have a good offense. Short like left field. Yeah, short left short field. Short left field. Uh, so it'll keep our left-handed hitters over there a little bit more. Um, we'll see how it plays out, but I, I I certainly like this ballpark. Spring training, you give everybody a packet on themselves. Why? I just think it's important to show how vested I am in their careers and what they're doing. And the more that I can express my interest in their career. Uh, and, and make it important that what they're doing means a lot to me. Um, it goes a long way. So um, I, I start out that way. I do a lot of homework on each guy. 
Uh, I give them the information, and then we start attacking. Like the idea that both the right side of the infield guys, Segura and Hoskins, who made defensive mistakes, mm -hmm. base running mistake mm -hmm. for Segura too. Mm -hmm. You know, he got, but no issues from an offense. They did not take their mistake defensively to their next at bat. Thoughts there, Kev? And we talk about that. We talk about turning the page, play baseball. Uh, it's going to happen. You're going to make mistakes. This game is not easy. Um, turn the page, wash, wash whatever happened, and, and be ready to proceed from there. And our guys have done a really, really good job of doing that, whether it's a base running blunder or they don't come through in a crucial situation or there's a fielding blunder. Um, we express to our guys that these things are going to happen. It's how you handle the adversity that's going to make or break you. And our guys have done a tremendous job getting over those mistakes. And that being said, yesterday, Chris and I had a conversation with Bobby Dickerson, your infield coach, mm -hmm. about the defense and how much better it has gotten, uh, particularly in the second half. Alec Bohm, Gene Segura, those types of guys. How much have you seen it improve? A ton. I mean, Bobby works his tail off with those guys. And they're out there working and every single day. And, uh, you know, we put aside time and our hitters know that you know it's not all about the cage they got to get out there and take care of the other side of the ball we know there's two sides of the ball we know that they have to defend um, and and we put a lot of time and effort in that as well Valdez in game two it's a good combination that the Astros can throw at you yeah. 98 mile an hour fastballs mm -hmm. for Verlander and then they got a guy there who likes to mix and match mm -hmm. throw your fastballs and you think change ups and curveballs and go the other way when you're thinking curveballs and change ups he is very good and it's mm -hmm. very interesting when he follows Verlander one two in a big spot Kev thoughts there they're amazing I mean they're really good pitchers but I believe in our hitters I believe in our guys uh, I think our guys are up up for the challenge. Um, we'll see how it turns out, but you know we're not taking them lightly. We know how talented both these guys are, and their bullpen, and if you know their game three and game four starters are amazing as well. So um, we just got done with a series where the pitching over there was pretty good, <laughs> um, and we felt the same way about those guys. Listen, they're talented, but so are we, and let's see how we match up and how we stack up. And um, I like our chances. The Astros have a ridiculous amount of pitching depth, but you guys yeah. have a really good one-two punch as well. Mm -hmm. Aaron Nola, of course, Zach Wheeler. Take it from the opposite side. How do you attack them? I really didn't like preparing for Aaron Nola. Really? I really didn't. He was, uh, he's a tough, tough opponent. He's got three pitches he can throw for strikes at any point in the, in, in the count. Um, he throws a ton of strikes, so you're not gonna get any free bases. Um, you know, Zach Wheeler is, he throws gas, and his slider's 92 94. Uh, it's a lot like Jacob DeGrom, in my opinion. Uh, where Zach's improved is his command, and he's become a pitcher. He really has. And, you know, I commend him for that and how far he's come, but those two are, you know, as tough to prepare for as anybody out there. Quickly there, Kev, you won game one, as I mentioned before, in all one of these, in every one of these series, and used that mojo. Then you got your home field there for those middle three. Game one, as significant in this World Series in your eyes, too? Oh, yeah. It's, it's always nice to jump out on top, um, get the lead. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world, but um, we're also, you know, we know that it's the World Series, and game ones are very important. So we're going to, you know, go into this game like it's a do or die situation. Bryce Harper. Aaron Judge, did you just leave him alone? No, I mean, as, as far as working with guys and, and making adjustments and, and do, you know talking to them about their swing, no, they, they want input. So uh, I believe even the best in the world at times need, uh, you know, some direction and some guidance. All right, everybody is always coachable. Great job, Kev. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to see you get a manager's job, too. I know you're on uh, some lists. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs>